Hey, thanks, Jonathan. Thanks, Mark. Hello, everyone. My name is Matt McEwen. And I'm Jeff Collins. And we're here to tell you what we've been up to in the Airship Project. Now, in past summits, we've talked a lot about what Airship can do in production. Is we, we should be able to um, uh, take a look at this little track that we built here. So this is the, this is the session running through our 5G core. And I've pulled the, the UUID of the VM that's serving that session. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hard uh, reboot the, that VM. And what we should happen is Gus should, we should have that teaming take effect. And we should be able to, to hold on to Gus. There'll be, a, there'll be a slight interruption as a, a new VM um, picks up that session and it transitions. Um, but we should, should be able to keep him. So that's now happened. And let's see. Gus, you still there? Yep, it should be reconnecting. And now what, you, what we should see is you'll see in the bottom right, we've, we've lost the VM. And there's Gus, he's back. Hey, guys. And, uh, and now we have a new UUID um, for the VM that's picked up this session. And today, we're excited to share an update on the progress toward the Airship 2.0 release. Now, the fundamental motivation for Airship 2 is the same as for Airship 1, to integrate best-in-breed open source projects into a platform that transforms declarative YAMLs into ready-to-go open infrastructure, taking care of things like bare metal provisioning, Kubernetes and OpenStack instantiation, security and network policy, and day two lifecycle management. This declarative model ensures predictability and repeatability across sites and across upgrades. The drivers for Airship 2 include the fact that a lot of good things have been happening in the Kubernetes ecosystem, which Airship can now take advantage of as opposed to implementing itself, along with the ability to consistently specify and control deployments across bare metal, public clouds, OpenStack, and other kinds of use cases, the ability to deploy sites faster and with smaller footprints, and many other new features and improvements. We've also created a web-based UI that can be used to introspect a site and to drive deployments and upgrades. Building on Airship's confirmation as a full OSF project late last year, we cut the beta release of Airship 2 in September and are targeting a GA release in first quarter next year. Now, although the mission statement for Airship 2 remains the same, you'll notice that the integrated projects doing the heavy lifting are substantially different. And Jeff's going to dig into that now. Airship 2.0 uses 10 components to bring up and manage the infrastructure. We start with Airship CTL, which is the one-stop shop client for managing the documents and deployments of the declared infrastructure into multiple target environments. We're using Airship now for deployments of the infra across both private and public clouds. Now, we've had several requests over the years to provide a front-end GUI, and we're happy to announce that we now have that with Airship UI. What Image Builder brings to the table is the ability to, to just bring your own YAML and let Image Builder do the packaging of the image as either a QCOW or an ISO. Then these are used for generating the bootstrap images for the host machines, which could be a VM-based deployment or bare metal, in which case the ISO would be streamed over Redfish. Now, Airship uses Customize to remove the duplication of the manifests and supplying the, the site-specific changes required, such as uh, uh, secrets, for example. And then we have kubeadm as one of the most, um, most popular pieces for managing and deploying the binaries for config of Kubernetes itself. There's cluster API as the de facto standard for declaring Kubernetes clusters. Using cluster API, we're now able to deploy into multiple customer, customer environments from a single Airship CTL binary. For provisioning, Airship uses Metal3 and Ironic as the cloud-native bootstrap manager to handle the infrastructure resources. We're using Flux Helm Operator for managing all of the Helm CRs, the, the custom resource definitions. Host config for day two operations based on the uh, declarative YAMLs. And then last, we have Treasure Map. And that's the, the reusable source for the manifest that gets used as the reference configuration of the target environment. So if you want to make a change to the environment, it's the Treasure Map manifest that gets overridden for the, the site or operator specific changes, which, is, uh, which we use Customize for. Now, we've made a lot of progress since the beginning. 
our work towards the 2.0 release in, in Q1 next year is well underway, and we'd love to, to have others join the project, either in the Airship project directly or in the other projects we reuse. Go to our website at airshipit.org to get the latest updates and connect with us on how to help in development.